exposed. Yeah. So, yeah can, can, that's, that's, uh, can and I, invited to pool parties. Yes, there you go. Yeah, that's true. I grew up in a neighborhood that was 99% white, yeah. And there were some pools. We didn't have a pool, but... Actually, he's um, from St. Louis, Missouri, which is the number one crime capital of the United States right, right now. That's right. That is right. Um, by the way, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like sharing a bizarre story of my dad being an accidental racist. I thought you were going to say something else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my dad uh, uh, was encouraged to run for city council. Hey. And he, yeah. ran, and he ran in Ohio. This is in Ohio. Oh, okay. And he ran. And my dad's from Wisconsin where, so you know, besides far. swimming, you got a lot of ice skating. And he thought, you know, which is another white thing. But mm-hmm. anyway, he thought it'd be nice to have maybe an ice skating rink. Mm-hmm. So he talks to the guy in charge, the treasurer, basically, mm-hmm. about, well, we've got this money set aside for this new pool. Would we be able to have uh, an ice skating rink? And the guy's like, yeah, yeah, we could do that. So then there ends up being a larger meeting, and it turns out all the racists were trying to prevent the swimming pool from being built because black people would end up swimming in the public pool. Uh-huh. And now my dad was seen as almost supporting that because he's siphoning money off for his <laughs> ice skating rink. Aww. And then the treasurer like, didn't back up the fact that he had supported my dad you know, uh-huh. saying, oh, we have money for both. Right. So my dad had to back down. And uh, hopefully they built that swimming pool. We we left. We, yeah. My dad ran for city council again and, and did not win, yeah. but uh, ran for large. But anyway, these are the types of shit that like little things that like microaggressions. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that people. Don't I, I'm not. I'm not prepared to teach you how to swim, but let's. I can do this. float though. I you can float. Okay. I can float. Well, you do better that's, than I do. That's close. Yeah, that's the first step. Why don't yeah. the four of us next weekend drive down to the beach? No, no, no. Yeah, no, I'm not. I don't don't go in the ocean. You don't go in the ocean? Well, I I like walking along the edge and letting my feet get wet. I don't even like that. I'm scared of the tide. All right. All right. For me, it's it's growing up, you know, off off Lake Michigan uh, back when it was a cesspool and, and, you know, going to the beach and seeing dead fish floating up on the shore. It's like, you know what, where I, I like big natural bodies of water, but where they don't have a lot of human access. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Middle of the ocean, ponds. <laughs> but See, I, yeah, don't, people... I don't do ponds because I'm afraid of brain-eating amoebas. Now that's See, actually legit. Yeah, There's, we didn't know yeah. about that uh-huh. back back uh, back in my day, back in the, uh, when I was in college uh, in Central Missouri. There were there were a few uh, places where people would like you know sneak in late at night because the good ones were always fenced off. Uh, but there was like if if you wanted to drive like thirty mile or thirty minutes out of town, uh, there were some strip mining pits where people would go swimming. There was this great quarry uh, that you had to bring extra towels to throw over the barbed wire fence. But awesome. Uh, and then there was this private lake uh, that we used to sneak into late at so night. So much effort just to go swimming. Well, yeah, but like late at night, you know, mid-Missouri, right. mid, mid Missouri, hot summer, it's like, mm-hmm. man, let's just... Yeah. This Swim. is why all the serial, best serial killers are from the Midwest. <laughs> because you just got kids running around at night swimming in yeah. quarries. Well, now when like, you say best, are you talking about inside the technique barbed wire or places? sheer numbers? You know, oh. because... Both. Okay. Yeah. Uh, at, I recently... Uh, there's there's a great dive bar in Chicago, the L and L Tavern, where not at the same time, but uh, both John Wayne Gacy and Jeffrey Dahmer used to hang out and drink, <laughs> uh-huh. and it's it's a great bar. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, I think you just you, saying. Yes, uh, I think to the L&L. I think road trip to Vegas, and we go to one of the casinos that has the swimming pool. Uh, I don't know which one is it, Hard Rock or? Oh, they all have pools. Well, okay, but there aren't there ones with like. Where they'll deal like you blackjack beachy? while you're in the oh, pool. Oh, I, I I don't know. I know they the, like they'll <laughs> they'll serve you cocktails, serve you cocktails yeah, and the some of them they'll deal you drugs depending on who you know. Yeah, <laughs> actually, I did I did. Time and you in. <laughs> We're gonna learn you how to swim. I've already put myself down to that's one of my bucket lists. To learn to swim. Yeah. All right. Learn learn to swim or die. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was gonna, I was gonna right. say it's you gonna said be you the last want... thing on the bucket list. Yeah, well, it's, it's, I was trying every time I think of doing it, I never get around to it. You but. know, I'm I'm thinking, you know, because art influences 
culture, you know, when 101 Dalmatians, the movie came out, everybody wanted to buy Dalmatians. I'm wondering if uh, The Shape of Water, which has, you know, multiple nominations for the Oscars, it's if gonna people are going to... want to fuck fish? Well, or learn to swim. Uh-huh. You know, you got to you gotta crawl fuck before fish. you can walk. <laughs> She was the one in this. That, no, that's not what that is. That's such and such. <laughs> really? I never thought about that one. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, she, yeah. yeah it's a uh, spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a uh, deaf person smoke. No, no, she's not fish. deaf. She's just mute. Uh, she's I mean, very and, socially awkward. And she fucked a fish man. Yeah. Are, there, are there any other, like, what, what some people might call white bullshit things on your bucket list? Where it's like, I've always wanted to... No, it used to be for a long time. There's like you know, oh, you know black people followed. don't ski, and then all of a sudden you got all these black ski clubs, and everything had to be exclusive, and all this, you know, ice skating. Oh, brothers don't play hockey. We got nine brothers in the hockey playing in the NHL now. So hey, and some of them are top scorers, it's, and they've yeah, won yeah. MVPs. So it's it's not everything is all just all about exposure. That's all it is. It's oh, exposure. absolutely, absolutely. But yeah. uh, but it is it is yeah. interesting because you'll meet. People maybe that it's kind of like the Jimi Hendrix thing. Everybody remember when I don't know if you know the Jimi Hendrix story, but the Isley brothers didn't know what is that brother playing, man? But where you get that from? And he's sitting there just doing riffs that they had never. He was way out of it, and they, you know, they found out this dude is bad because once he went to Europe, he blew up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Jimmy was blowing away, you know, because you know a lot of the black bands, and he was they, they just couldn't handle what he was doing. He was just out there, you know. And so. this, are you saying this led to more? Yeah, it led to more brothers playing rock and roll. Oh, okay. Yeah, it led to more. It, did, it just opened up because Hendrix was doing things that they think that, well, they should all be like, no, we are all different. We do a lot of different things. Speaking could, of, could, just quick tangent. Have you heard the, I, I mean, a not really new, came out of cover, but Living Color has a new album out? Yeah, remember Original Living Color? Yeah, those guys, those brothers used to, yeah. Oh, they got a, they got a new album, yeah. new-ish. Because yeah. uh, the one, great. The, one guy, the, the lead singer was an actor at Cor- one time. Uh, Corey... Um... Haim? No. Okay. <laughs> now, there's a musician. Corey Glover? There's no. a musician. I was going to say that, speaking of, of, of lesbians, I did the Melissa Etheridge cruise. I love Melissa Etheridge. Oh, see, then you, she... would, you could do stand-up on a cruise ship because she had... I was coming on... And this, the cruise ship, I mean, I wasn't performing for her, but I was coming on, you know, going to catch. And then those people were all, but it was uh, 2,000 lesbians all in one spot. And they had the bands and they had lesbian comedians and the whole thing was great. Hmm. She, by the way, uh, she sang at the march. We didn't talk about oh, the march. Really? Melissa yeah. Etheridge? Oh. Yep. With, uh, with the Hollywood uh, gay men's chorus. There you go. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 Real quick, uh, because we have uh, five minutes, but you bring up the Women's March, and uh, I, w- I wanted to talk, uh, because we, uh, on last week's show, uh, we didn't have any women in the studio because everyone was at the march, um, and something interesting that came up this week, and going back to Missouri, where uh, Jim grew up, and I spent eight years learning stuff. But uh, they've got a, a Republican U.S. Senate, Senate candidate, uh, Cortland Sykes. Oh, that guy's so fake. Uh, all right, wait, fake. How do you mean? I like, think he's an improv performer. It, you think he's so over the top that this can't be real? Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is the guy who uh, got a lot of press this week because he said that he expects a cooked meal on the table when he gets home and uh, women have no, basically, you know, women have no place having real jobs. Uh, they, they should be at home providing uh, a, a good home for their men. It kind of, I mean, if you met somebody who said that, you, you would kind of think, oh, this is a character, right? Well, he also, he wrote in a, I guess uh, a newspaper wanted to interview him, and he wrote in a, instead of answering their interview questions, he sent them an 11 page document of questions that he had prepared and answered himself <laughs> um and it's it's just ridiculous and also no one has ever heard of his fiance if you google her name she doesn't even exist huh. curiouser and curiouser well that's how we have it in missouri but also <laughs> court land sykes come on <laughs> come on well, what they're saying is, I think uh, she's, he's running against Claire McCaskill, right? Right. And 
um, it could be that they feel that Claire McCaskill is so strong or thanks to a kind of a, an anti-Trump movement that no Republicans of the mainstream want to run against. So that's why this guy's. Well, there, there are some candidate. folks in, in Missouri politics. One guy who I actually uh, <laughs> knew in college, uh, who's, uh, I believe he's a state Senator, Kurt Schaefer, who was a good guy in college. Uh, and he is a freaking Nazi now that he's in the state legislature. And, literally, uh, literally and figuratively. Okay. Um, but, uh, just, yeah, like, you know, Racist, sexist legislation, just nuts, just craziness. Um, so I, I wanted to put the question out there uh, because we only have a couple minutes. So I, I feel horrible, uh, like we're, you know, short change in the subject, but we had so much fun talking about everything else. Um, the Women's March was last week and Donald Trump tweeted uh, some bullshit that they were out celebrating his achievements as president. Then you get this jackass uh, who is, yeah, if it is performance art, it's trite and cliche. It's been done before. Uh, but Faith, what you know? What do you think the the year ahead? I know the the focus at the Women's March uh, was on getting the vote out. What what do you see as the, you know, sort of mission for women and for, for men, like, you know, in, in the coming year, what, what has been accomplished? Where do we need to go? I think we're all going to die. Oh, I think that's a, it's just such an, it's way too open-ended of a question for me to fair enough to answer in any significant way in the amount of time we have left. So I'm going to say everything's terrible and it's getting terrible or, um, but that's the way it always has been. So maybe we, we will all die. Maybe we won't. I don't know. I'm just being me. <laughs> I think. I think. Uh, uh, time and uh, you encouraged that. Yeah, told to be yourself. <laughs> Chances are, there's going to be a huge win for Democrats, and uh, there are way more women running than ever before. Uh, I think. I think there's maybe I, I read something where there's like 19 African American women in Congress, and there's like maybe double that running for Congress. Now, some of those will be in primaries where, you know, sure. maybe one will eliminate the other. But, but um, you know, if you watch the uh, – the, so there was a documentary about Anita Hill. And when she was uh, treated so poorly, that's when the women started running for Congress in ju- huge numbers. And I think this is going to dwarf that. So it's gonna, there's going to be some changes. Run up, Mr. Ship. Um... I don't know. I mean, I think that, you know, this, um, if you're looking, if you're looking for, uh, a lot of things to, I just, I guess you just got to wait and see, you know, because, uh, it's great that the women's movement is happening. Uh, that's as far as Hollywood, that they're going to fight for the, the little, you know, the women that are, don't have those type of jobs or those things that are moving up that, you know, they're going to open some doors. But hopefully it opens some doors, not just that the women of color are going to, and I really just get tired of saying all that. I just think that, you know, that some sisters out there that, that uh, they need to, you just, you just can't say, hey, I'm fighting for them. You have to fight for all women, you know, and, and that racial connotation is going to be in there because of what, because of the history of, United, of the United States and how they've treated people. So you have to include uh, everybody. And what's going on? So I hope that uh, the doors swing open, and uh, a lot of folks get uh, you know fair you know fair as far as pay and as far as work, and we see some 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 things actually happening. I hope it all works. Right on. And as for my predictions, I you know uh, I I know there are a lot of people on the right who are just seeing this as you know a passing fad, you know whatever. Uh, but the the key to making this movement successful and achieving goals is to keep it up front and center, uh, in everything. And so far, uh, that has not been a problem. Uh, we should always remember what we're fighting against and what we're fighting for. Um, and that is, you know, I, I hate to do a, all women matter, you know, but there, you know, people who are supporting the movement, whether they are women or not, need to recognize that there are women of color and other groups that have gotten even more of a short shrift. Uh, so let's 
get the right shrift for everybody. We got to end there because I know, uh, Yep. Faith, you got to pay for parking. So uh, I want to thank our panel. Uh, Mr. Ship, you got anything you want to plug? Uh, no, not right now. I do. Thanks. All right. But people can find you on Twitter. At Time and Ship. At Time and Ship.